If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. What we're going to do is draw a free body diagram showing the forces on the 8 kilogram object and then draw a separate free body diagram for the forces on the 14 kilogram object. For the 8 kilogram object, we have the gravitational force, which is equal to its mass times g. And then we have this upward tension force that's present in the rope that we can just call T. For the 14 kilogram block, we have the tension force that's tending to pull the block up the ramp. And now we also have the downward gravitational force. Now, we got to be careful here because although the gravitational force points straight down, what we're going to do is break it into two components. One of the components is going to point parallel to the surface of the ramp, and the other component will point perpendicular to the surface of the ramp. The component that's parallel to the ramp will be the mass times g times the sine of whatever angle the incline is making with the horizontal. In this case, it's 50 degrees. The other component will be mg times the cosine of that same angle. Now we also have a normal force that's pushing upward on the box, and we can call that n. And then because there's friction, we have a frictional force acting. Now to decide which direction the frictional force is acting, we need to figure out which direction this box is traveling. Generally, if the box on the ramp is more massive than the hanging box, then that means it's going to slide down the ramp. But what you really have to do to confirm that is to take the mass of the box that's on the ramp, which is 14 kilograms, and multiply that by the sine of whatever angle the incline is making, which is 50 degrees. Now, in this case, 14 times sine of 50 is about 10.7, and that is indeed greater than the 8 kilograms that's hanging off the edge. And since it's greater, that means that box will indeed slide down the ramp. And as that box slides down the ramp, we're going to have a kinetic frictional force that's opposing that motion. So we're going to have this FK force right here. Now, after drawing these free body diagrams, we have to apply Newton's second law to both situations. Let's go back to the 8 kilogram block. We can say that the tension minus gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration of this block. Now, we could go ahead and actually fill in the 8 kilograms for the mass and 9.8 for g, just so we can simplify this a little bit. Why don't we multiply 8 by 9.8? And when we do that, we get t minus 78.4 equals 8a. Now that's one equation. We're going to hold on to it. Next, we'll look at the forces that are acting parallel to the surface of the ramp for the 14 kilogram object. And maybe before we do that, why don't we call this direction positive and this direction negative, since the box is sliding down the ramp. And so, in this case, we have the mg sine 50 force, which is positive because it's pointing down the ramp, minus the tension force, minus the frictional force, is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Now, we have the mass of that block. It's 14, and g is 9.8. So why don't we plug those in? And then we can plug into our calculator 14 times 9.8 times the sine of 50, and that gives us about 105.1 minus the tension minus the kinetic frictional force equals the mass times the acceleration. Now let's talk about the kinetic frictional force for just a moment. We know that the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force, which we've actually called n. Go back to the free body diagram, and you can see that n, which points straight up, is balanced by this force, mg cos 50. We know they're balanced because the box is not accelerating in this direction right here. That means we can replace n with mg cosine of 50, since they're equal in magnitude. Now we know the value of mu k. That's given to us as being 0.19. And then we can plug in the mass of this block, g, and then multiply this all out. And when we do that, it works out to be 16.8. So that's the value for the kinetic frictional force that we're going to be plugging into our equation over here. We'll put in 16.8. Now our goal is to solve for the acceleration. And to do that, we can actually go ahead and add these two equations together. Now the reason that that works is because this positive tension and this negative tension, when you add the two equations together, those will cancel. And then we can go ahead and add the 105.1 to the negative 78.4 and the negative 16.8. And when we do that, we get about 9.945. And then we add the right-hand side, too, to get 22a. And then we can just divide both sides of this equation by 22. And when we do that, we get 0.452, approximately, meters per second squared. 
So this is the correct answer for the magnitude of the acceleration. As for the direction, we've already stated that the acceleration of the 14 kilogram object is down the ramp. So we could put that in for the direction of the acceleration.